Hey parents, uh, one thing that I want to do this year uh, is do a better job of helping parents understand some of the things they can be doing to help their sons throughout the offseason. Um, we did a lot of video work with the COVID stuff, um, and in doing that, I realized it's a great way to help people see things that maybe we take for granted as coaches. Uh, so this year, we're going to do a couple videos that we're going to call our parent college uh, to help you guys be an at-home coach for your sons. Uh, the first thing that I want to start with is a routine that you can do uh, when you go to the cages with your son. Uh, I realized this year more than ever before that one of the reasons that people don't utilize the membership is they're not sure what to do when they get to the facility. Uh, so what I want to do is give you guys a way that when you take your son or when you send your son to, to the cages, we can make sure that we're being productive and we're making sure that you're comfortable going in. Now, most times when you come to the cage, you're going to want to start out with your team work. The uh, reason is it's the best place for us to get warmed up. Um, but it's also the best place for us to actually work on the parts of our swing uh, that we might want to focus on that day. Uh, anytime you add an element of timing or location when it comes to front toss or using the machine or batting practice that we're going to talk about in a second, um, that changes what you're doing with your swing, and there's no way around that. Um, with the stationary ball, it's a good place for us to be able to focus on the feel or the, or the movements of what we're doing without having to worry about timing. Uh, it's also great to have a routine. So have a warm-up routine, have a drill routine, uh, and those are some of the things that the boys learn in practice. So it's important that they pay attention in practice because those are the exact things that they should be taking into their cage time that week. Um, it's important to note, too, where I have the tee. Tee location is really important when you're getting work done. It doesn't do us any good to be hitting the ball way back in the back of our stance. It's, it's something that people, people often overlook is that where I make contact dictates the, ball, the flight of the ball. So if I'm consistently hitting ground balls, it may just mean that I'm hitting the ball really deep in my stance. Whereas if I have the ball teed up and I'm working just towards the front of my front foot, I can take the same exact swing and that ball's gonna take off from me. So it's important that we look at the details of when we're doing our tee work, where is the tee? Are we moving it around to work on adjustability? Or am I stuck in one spot where I'm only gonna be working on one pitch? All right, those are the types of things that we talk to the boys about in practice. So it's important that you ask them those questions when they get in the cage with you because those are things that they should understand. And if they don't, encourage them to come talk to us at practice. We'll be happy to help them out. Once you get done with your tee work, you're going to want to progress to what we call front toss or soft toss. All right, this is going to come from behind the L screen. And there's two ways that you can do it. You can either sit on the bucket to be more comfortable or stand if it's easier for you to work with a step. It's important to know here that you want to line up the post of the L screen with the center or the inside part of the plate so you're throwing straight towards the plate. Now when you do throw it, you want to have a little bit of steam on it. So we're going to be about 12 to 15 feet apart and we're not trying to give them an unrealistic lob pitch because that's not what they're going to be used to seeing in the game. When we're doing front toss, the point of this for a player versus doing full batting practice or hitting off the machine is it's a little bit easier to work on what they're trying to feel versus trying to do it off the full timing of a pitch. So that's why we take this as the first step to go from what they were working on on the tee to be able to work on it with some ball flight before we let it loose with live reps. So when we're here, if I'm going standing up, I want to put a little bit of steam on it and I want to work different parts of the plate. It doesn't change any bit if I'm sitting down. For me, I prefer to be sitting down because it's a little bit easier for me to focus on where I'm going to control and the speed that I'm going to put it at when I'm not trying to time it with my feet. Either way is okay. You know, I have heard people say that, well, it's not the same as a true ball flight because the pitch isn't coming down. That's okay. We're not working on game reps, we're working on feel, and that's the important part here. I'm going to take you guys mobile for a minute here as we talk about the third part of our cage routine, and that's live reps. I want to show you guys the pitching machines that we've just invested in, uh, both at the Business Center Drive location and at the Central Road location that we just took over, um, because we think that's a huge part of what we're offering for our athletes. Uh, I'm going to flip the screen around right now so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. The machines that we've invested in are the ones that are going to give our guys the most realistic representation of an in-game pitch. Uh, these three-wheeled models right here, we have an ATEC one. Over at the Central Road location, we have hack attacks. And then in the cage behind me, uh, we actually have a spin ball machine. Uh, the reason that we've chosen to invest in these is, is it is as true to a game-like pitch as we can recreate. These machines, because they have three wheels, are able to create breaking balls, curve balls, uh, 
uh, cutters, and, and even the spin ball machine throws as high as 100 miles an hour. So the days of being afraid to use a pitching machine, I've heard every theory there is. It's gonna mess up my swing, it's gonna mess up my bat. That's not true. These machines are throwing real baseballs, they're throwing with spin, they're throwing different locations because they are throwing real baseballs. This is as close to a game as we're gonna get. And I know dads sometimes wanna jump in a cage and have some fun with the boys and throw BP, which I'm all for. But let's make sure that we're also utilizing these machines to make sure that the boys are getting game reps. Uh, I don't wanna burst any bubbles, but I laugh every time I see a son and their dad getting into it because you know dad's just not giving them many strikes or he's not throwing hard enough and god bless every parent that's willing to get in a cage and do that with their son um and i and i still think you should um but let's make sure too that we're utilizing these machines because it, it is going to be a really good thing that these boys can do um to make sure that they're ready for games you know i've seen the past couple years some guys are struggling with velocity we'll crank up the machine and test them or, you know it shouldn't be easy all the time there's a time where it should feel easy and they can get in a good rhythm but there's also time where they should be challenged. Uh, so learn the way where, what kind of mood your son might be in that day um, and what you're working on. Uh, but these are the three phases that, that can help you guys once you take your sons over to the cages. Start out with a T, progress to some front toss or soft toss, whatever you want to call it, and then work on some live reps if there's time. Uh, live reps are honestly probably the last priority. Uh, we want to utilize that a little bit closer to when we're getting in season to get ready for games. Uh, but during the off season when we're working on stuff, uh, the tee and front toss is just fine. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, of course, as always, uh, feel free to reach out. But I hope this helps you guys feel a little more comfortable getting in the cages with the boys. And uh, we'll see you guys over at the uh, player development location on Central.